Today we're exploring the town of Newberry, Massachusetts. The town of Newberry is tied directly to the birth of America and it can still be seen in the urban landscape that exists today. Additionally, these features of the town have been identified in the master plan for the town and most likely will be preserved as our country continues to age. Just for a little background so you can really understand the layout of the town, in 1633, Yes, think about this for just a minute, almost 388 years ago. Thomas Parker and James Noyes, who were nonconformist ministers with a group of people of a similar like mind, decided to immigrate to the Massachusetts Bay Colony. At that same exact time, Richard and Stephen Drummer, Richard Saltonstall, Henry Seawall, and others decided to organize a company to establish a stock-raising plantation because the prices in England were so high for horses, sheep, cattle, and hogs. The latter group of men I just mentioned convinced Parker and his group to join them, and they landed upon immigration to the colony in Ipswich, which at the time was called Agwan. The first few years they cleared land, but then in 1635 there was a group that rode upstream in some small boats to today what is called the Parker River. Now remember this area was wild with lots of estuary and terrain differences. And you can see these in some of the images. It's very similar to what it was. They spent some time clearing the land and setting up their homesteads. And I'm mentioning this to you because you can see some of this history reflective of what Newberry is like today. There is a rural feel of the area with large swaths of land that existed and farming and agricultural areas as well. It's not like out west where developers have come in and bulldozed entire landscape for housing developments. One really fun thing that draws a lot of visitors to Newberry is in the fall there's a field of sunflowers on Scotland Road. As the population grew, people moved away from the Parker River banks and the area of the Upper Green and Lower Green were developed as well as byfield. Initially, the area was huge by today's standards. Newberry extended from the Merrimack River to the Parker River to Plum Island and to the area of Bradford in Haverhill. So that would incorporate West Newberry, Newburyport, Georgetown, Groveland, and Haverhill, which is big. Then Newburyport and West Newberry broke off. Plum Island was not developed as it is today, as the initial inhabitants wanted to graze sheep, horses, and cattle but the general court enacted a conservation measure because the grazing destroyed the grass roots and caused erosion. Today, the town has its own police and fire departments as well as its own government. And while the physical areas of Newberry are different, the Upper Green, Lower Green, Byfield, and Plum Island all are part of Newberry. Today, Plum Island is bifurcated by two jurisdictions, Newburyport and Newberry, and the federal area of the Parker River National Wildlife Refuge. This area has miles of beaches, an estuary that separates this area from Ipswich and Newberry, and the Parker River Wildlife Sanctuary was established in 1942, primarily to provide feeding, resting, and nesting habitats for migratory birds, but it is a fabulous open space area that is a prize. In terms of Plum Island housing, it's a beachside community with a whimsical feel. And there are discussions taking place about the restrictions on the development of the island in the future. You can also take boat tours on the Newburyport side of Plum Island, as well as go birding, biking, and spend the day at the beach on the Newberry side of the island. Some restaurants that the locals like include Mad Martha's, Plum Island Grill, and the Beachcomber, as well as Bob's Lobster. These restaurants change over time, but really a 10 minute drive over the bridge and you will find what's open. In another video, I talk about the pros and cons of Newburyport, and I mention the green heads that you have to watch out for future in the height of summer. So take a look at that video too. This barrier island is a special place, and hopefully man will keep from ruining it. As one travels up towards the area known as Byfield, again, there are huge open space areas that have been preserved and offer walking trails for who, those who like that activity. Old Town Hill, which I made a dog walking video on, is a nice walk as well as Great Meadow. Homes located along these roads are reflective of the time in which they were built. Newberry has great highway access on the 95, which then turns into the 128, or you can split off and go down Route 1, which is an easy drive into Boston in about 30 to 45 minutes, depending on traffic. 
or over to the 495, which takes you on the other transportation corridor, accessing the Boston suburbs that are just a little further out. Newberry also has a regional school system sharing with Salisbury and Raleigh but the middle and high school is located physically in Newberry. If you take a look at my website, HODL Real Estate, you'll find a page dedicated just for Newberry and you can find a lot of information. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you now know what it's like to live here. I'm Julie Marion with HODL Real Estate and I get calls and emails every day from buyers looking for a real estate agent. If you're a buyer looking for a real estate agent, I would love to help you. And if you're a seller, I have a six step program to help you get top dollar for your home in this market if this is the right time for you. As always here at HODL Real Estate, we buy and sell every home as it is our own. Make it a great day.